Was this a dog man or something else? What keeps them away or deters them? A year ago was when the first encounter happened. It was just me and my grandma home. We live in city limits inside of a small town. My mother and father went out hunting that night. I was in my room listening to music and on my phone. At 11 AM someone started knocking on our front door. Super weird as we hardly ever have anyone come by after 9 PM. My grandma was the first one to the door and when she went to check there is no one and she opened the door for both of us to check. No one, we were a bit confused and figured it was some kids playing around. 1 AM comes around fairly quickly, I was in my chair and had a headset on. I kept hearing something scratching something, I'd taken my headset off to pause and listen and it happened again. It was scratching the outside wall of my room, I was a bit worried to look out the window so I didn't rush to check. But I had my phone ready and 911 dialed in before I felt comfortable to flash a light outside my window. I seen nothing no prints or obvious signs of anything. Soon as I closed my blinds and sat back I heard something run on the roof right above my room into the front of the house and back down above my room then ran off the front of the house. I was stunned and fight or flight was taking over I reacted by top locking the doors and moving whatever furniture by the door. My dad left his .308 in his room so I grabbed that and posted up in my grandma's room with her until my parents came back. Whatever it was that ran on the roof had to be huge. We had roofers on our roof before and even they didn't step or move on the roof that loud and heavily. But whatever was running on the roof had to be heavy or powerful enough to hear and feel in the house. 2.30 AM my parents came back they pulled in the driveway and I helped them inside then moved everything back while I was telling them what happened. My mother didn't want to talk at first, while my dad looked pale and shaken up when I mentioned the scratching outside. We sat down and my mother spoke up that they were driving past the hydropower lines and there was a large wolf-like creature darted past them and went behind a large rock. They thought they clipped the creature and may have to help put it down, but soon as they stopped the truck and father got his gun out. The wolf looked out from the rock and snarled back at them. It didn't look the same this time it was evil to look at and it was standing up this time staring down my dad. My dad squeezed off a shot and hit it in the chest. It crashed behind the rock but after that my dad worried for my mother and him he decided against seeing if it was finished. Got back in the truck and held down the gas all the way back to town until he got back home. What's weirded me out the most is whatever it is it's resurfaced around town recently and people finding large wolf-like prints in their yards and a neighbor said something was standing and looking through their living room window a month ago. French werewolf. 10 years ago in a little town outside of Toulouse, France, right after dark, waiting for a restaurant to open. Our big group of family, Americans, took a walk up a hill to look at the town graveyard from the road. Walking back, we could see the whole town below us, the road ahead lined with stone walls in front of houses. About 100 yards ahead, illuminated by the streetlight, I see a huge black dog shaped thing leave our sidewalk, lope into the middle of the street, rise up on its hind legs and quickly scale and disappear over the 8 foot stone wall opposite. There were cars and bushes and gates to use for visual scale and this thing was tall, like 7 to 8 feet. Picture the werewolf from the film Prisoner of Azkaban, yep, spot on. My family was chattering away about whatever, but I said, did you guys see that? And my son says, oh yeah, that was a werewolf. We walked by the spot a minute later and everyone was laughing at us, but screw that. I don't care if you believe me or not was the serious, straightforward introduction I was given to a possible wolfman sighting in the autumn of 2013. It was at this point that my longtime friend Andrew told me of not just one encounter, but two separate encounters with more than one strange, bipedal creatures out hunting game near Norton, Ohio. Andrew normally works night shifts, which means traveling quiet, darkened roads is an everyday occurrence for him. One cold autumn night in particular, while traveling down Johnson Road bordering Silver Creek Metro Park, what he saw was anything but routine. 
approximately 50 yards from the intersection with Medina Line Road, he stopped his car when two deer raced across the road heading south. But what caught his attention was what they were running from. I would place them somewhere between six apostrophe six and seven tall. They chased the two deer, which were both smaller, by the way, out across the street and into the woods. They ran, in formation, one in front, two behind, kind of next to each other. They were roughly 30 to 40 yards behind the deer. They were bipedal, very muscular, and fast. Lightning fast. It all happened in just a few seconds. I couldn't describe any features, unfortunately, I'm assuming it was either a new moon or cloudy because it was very dark, but they were definitely a dark color. Maybe a chocolate brown or a black color. I pressed him for any more detail. After all, there have been Bigfoot sightings in Ohio. They say that Bigfoot has long arms that swing when it runs, and it runs like a human. Whatever these were, they weren't Bigfoot. I can't describe how they moved, but they didn't move like a person. Less than a month later, Andrew was heading home on Johnson Road. As he passed a moonlit cornfield, something ran in front of his car. The fields had full-grown corn stalks, but I don't know exact heights only that the corn stalks were taller than me by a head and I'm six feet tall. This time, my sighting of two creatures, was a quick flash because there was no open land to it. They basically leapt the road as they broke the corn and landed about 10 to 15 feet into the field on the other side and kept running. This time, the pair that I saw in the moonlight, the first was black and the second was black with white or silver on its chest and back. Since the first three I saw were all a solid color, that means there must be at least four different creatures. On October 11, 2014, I set out with Andrew and his wife to see what we could find in the way of evidence that whatever he saw might still be around. The location of the first sighting is bordered to the south by Silver Creek Metro Park. On the other side of the road, there are three or four houses with a large field behind them. As Andrew pointed out, the creatures pass through the field and pass the houses on the night he saw them meaning these creatures must not have much fear of being near human habitation. The second sighting was on a slight hill between two large fields in a rather remote area. Not only were both places quite close to each other, they are both in close proximity to Silver Creek. We had planned an investigation of Silver Creek Metro Park, arriving at dusk, but the reservoir lake and surrounding park was alive with bonfires and hundreds of people celebrating the second annual fall family outing making any chance of searching for wolfman like creatures too difficult. A follow-up trip is still slated for, hopefully, this winter. Other witnesses may exist, but their reluctance to go public is understandable. If you saw large dark creatures running on two feet, you too might think people would call you crazy. But there is an earlier account worth mentioning here which may give more credence to these sightings. In Linda Godfrey's book Real Wolf Men, there's a 2010 story titled The Persistent Chicken Thief, p. 262-7, about a family put in contact with Godfrey after several incidents on their farm. Their son Drew was one witness to a large, dark creature over six feet tall lurking in the tree line in March. The lone rooster began to squawk and the creature let out a fierce growl, then all went silent. Drew heard what sounded like something jumping back over the fence, and the rooster squealed as if in pain. At that point, Drew grabbed a gun and flashlight and ran outside, searching the fence from the front porch with his light. He saw the rooster but it appeared to have something dark over its middle. It slowly dawned on Drew that the something dark was the muzzle of a creature with two glaring eyes. Whatever it was, he said, it seemed to look through me. It turned my blood cold and I was paralyzed with fear. I'm a hunter. I'm used to being in the wilderness and encountering bigger animals. Those animals don't scare me like this thing did. When I encountered this thing the first time, I got the feeling that it wanted to hurt me. After researching something I've never believed in, I'm convinced that this thing is a dogman. Loud howls and the sound of something walking on two legs in the gravel driveway plagued the family for many months. 
The family kept a detailed diary of their strange events, but unfortunately Godfrey has since lost contact with them. While the exact location of the farm is not known, it is in the vicinity of Norton, Ohio. In May 2010, Kristen Miller of Wadsworth reported seeing a large cat with a long tail resembling a mountain lion at dusk in Silver Creek Metro Park and reported it to park officials. There have also been reports of black bears in the area, though neither of these creatures can run on two feet, nor do they come close to being nine to seven feet tall. Silver Creek is a tributary for the aptly named Wolf Creek. Long ago, timber wolves were common across Ohio, though as farming developed among early settlers, these furry canines became less of an accepted part of the wilderness and more of a nuisance as the animals hunted and killed many sheep. Thousands of Ohio wolves were hunted, trapped, and poisoned in an effort to eradicate them from the area. 1842 marked the final killing of a wolf in Ohio and the end of the wolf's presence here. While wolves have been driven from Ohio, perhaps something far more frightening has replaced them. The mystery of the Silver Creek Wolfmen is far from solved. At this time, I consider my investigation ongoing. Anyone who has witnessed anything similar or discovered any possible evidence of these creatures can contact me directly at kennethufortedmag.com. When I was six years old and attending my primary school in South Africa, where there was this sort of alley between the main building and a retaining wall that had a storage room at the end of it, with a bunch of desks and chairs stacked in front of the doors, presumably because the desks and chairs were in the process of being moved in or out, a friend and I saw what I believed to have been a dog man. We were playing near the entrance of the alley in the early morning before school began when one of us noticed movement coming from behind the stacked desks. We both looked and saw a creature that had the head of a black dog slash wolf and the body of a man with glowing green eyes. It watched us from behind the desks, moving up and down from all fours to its hind legs, alternating between completely hiding itself from our sight and peeking up at us from the gaps in the desks. Me and the other child stood there frozen for a few minutes watching this creature watch us from the end of the alley before one of us snapped out of it and pulled the other away leading us both to run away. The other child and myself later told other people, but no one seemed to believe us. I have never seen this creature, or anything like it again. There is a part of me that believes that this is nothing more than a false memory that I managed to convince myself was real, since I tend to be a bit skeptic and the events I just described seem impossible but there remains a part of me that cannot understand why the memory feels so real that I cannot differentiate it from other childhood memories that I know for a fact happened. So I just moved to a gated community, near a lake, I was kind of getting used to see the moon above the lake on a little sort of communal patio. The light was busted but the moonlight was enough for it to not feel dark. I get near and saw a mixture of person bending like a dog, I toot it was just some nagborg I didn't know yet, so I let him know I'm there. Hey there neighborg, I'm just moved niche door, just came to Sarah the moon I was just gonna leave because, I didn't want to disturb anybody. Then the neighbor got up in two feet, to start, it was towel, the arms were easily hanging all the way to his knees. I found that odd, but the kicker was when he turned around. Dear Lord, the face was dog-like, big thief, pointy ears and a scary smirk that I will never forget, the skin was covered in fur but you could sear some skin. I didn't know how to react so I just stood there until I heard my partner coming. I ran to her and told her, you gotta sear this. And less than five seconds that took my so to turn her eyes to the lake, the thing was gone never to be seen agging. I'll begin by saying I have no clue if this was a dogman proper, but after partaking in some of Linda Godfrey's research and rekindling my childhood interest in werewolves I thought there were some odd synchronicities. Me and my brother used to go to this somewhat secluded mountain creek in southwest Virginia before life and responsibilities got in the way. 
It backs up on Jefferson National Forest and judging by Google Earth it's a pretty secluded area. The road up to it ends abruptly but turned into a long overgrown and degraded road along the creek that we had discovered led to a very scenic boulder strewn swimming hole that we would hang out at and have a few drinks and smokes. To get there you had to go past an obviously long abandoned coal mine with tall piles of mine rubble. One day we were surprised when a huge wolf-sized mangy German shepherd looking dog slid down from the mine and daintily made his way to us with a big smile. We were hesitant they had rabies but they seemed aware and sort of greeted as before just sort of following us to our spot. We thought it was odd a stray would be in the middle of the woods but we sort of laughed it off and let him chill out with us at our spot while he fished and we sipped on beer. The next few times we went out there there he would be there, sliding down the coal slough to hang out so we dubbed him our buddy Mr. Croy from a family name we had noticed at a derelict cemetery nearby. We became more comfortable with each other so he'd just sit by while we sat and chilled on the boulders. Our only issue was that he smelled terrible, like rotting sulfur but he was our buddy so we just let it slide. We also noted he seemed strangely human in mannerism, especially his eyes, thus Mr. Croy became a family enigma we would joke about being our drinking buddy. We even tried to get him to come home with us but he would never go past this grove of huge dead hemlock trees. Come next spring we decided to head out there to see our coal mine friend but he was nowhere to be found, at least seen. He had a heavy gait and you could hear his distinct thump as something followed us and we both looked at each other as nothing was there. Copping it off as nothing and sat our buddy was gone we continued to our spot but we were still obviously followed by heavy footsteps. We sat at our spot talking and sipping on beer when we got the distinct rotten egg smell we associated with him. At that point we were getting weird vibes and somewhat spooked it back to the car. We never really went there after that as life got in the way and he started dating and I started working. We tried to go back a few years ago but there was like some sort of white supremacist encampment at the entrance that made us too uncomfortable to venture further. We still talk about it to this day when it comes up, our mysterious wilderness dog friend. This encounter happened in May 1989. We went on a school trip visiting the ruins of an old Sandinistas outpost that was politically historic, located by the town called Granada in Nicaragua. We were 27 kids all together, and had special permission from our parents to go there. I happened to notice that there were houses by the place where the historical site was. They were on the hills of a mountain, where I stupidly had gone to investigate. The houses were old and made of wood. They were about 60 yards from the historical site. As I came by the first house an elderly man came and asked me why I wasn't with my group. I told him, why do you care? He responded in an angry tone, because there are things out here that will take you. Our country is wild but only if you travel in the mountains, rivers, lakes or by the sea, so I paid no mind to his warning. It was around 5.30 p.m. and I was about 100 yards from the historical site. As soon as the teacher blew her whistle we were to regroup at the bus in order to leave. I was sitting next to the tree line eating a sandwich, when behind me I heard a distinct noise. It was a growling sound that literally shook all of my nerves. I immediately turned back to see if anything was coming my way. Suddenly I heard the teacher's whistle. I figured I had a good two or three minutes to get up the tree and see if I could spot anything so I did. What I saw crawling on the forest floor did not make any sense at all. It was a man lying on the ground, about 80 or 100 feet in the wood line. His body was jerking as if in extreme pain. I saw that his back looked sweaty, and as he jerked he turned his face towards me and I could see his eyes were red and his nose was literally turning black and elongated. I quickly climbed down the tree, grabbed my backpack and left, running to the bus. Apparently I was the last to return. As the bus started to drive off I said a prayer to protect me from this monster that roams the land. I asked my grandpa the next day about this things that I had seen. He grew up there and was a native from our country, 
and his dad had been a coffee farmer which is one of the things my country still trades to the US. He explained that the locals had a curfew and that they never went out unarmed to pick the coffee because of these things. They had suspected they were both animals and humans, and practiced devil worshipping, and traded their souls in order to shape shift into many animal forms, such as the great wolf spirit. I have to tell you that when we made our life in the US I had thought I had left the monsters behind me, but as it turns out I was wrong. I am in Austin TX, and have been here since 1996. I encourage people I know to not go out into the woods alone, and do not wear bright colors. At least go armed with a gun or a bear pepper spray, because I do believe I was lucky, but I will not tempt fate again. This will sound crazy. I live in this really small town in Eastern Oregon, and I don't think there has ever been a sighting of a dog man in my neck of the woods. Tons of Bigfoot sightings, but not this beast. The reason why I title this as crazy is because I was high when I saw this thing, and a lot of people think you see stuff high, and that's a yes and no. With me it is medicinal and it helps with glaucoma, headaches, and depression. I put that there because maybe I did make it up in my head, but holy yes am I still scared hours after it occurred. Last night I finished writing a couple of papers for my college courses, and as I finished up the I could feel that the hairs on the back of my neck start standing up. I turned to my window where the blinds are down but not folded, like I could see somewhat through them. I could have sworn something moved to the left side of my house where the corner of my room is. I figured it was an owl or something so I didn't freak myself out. I close the blinds and I head into the kitchen to grab something to drink. In my house the only light you can get at night is by the outdoor lighthouse that acts like a floodlight to an extent, and the other source would be Christmas lights and moonlight. I didn't want to turn anything on so I didn't want to wake up any of my folks, so I had everything off. While I was grabbing a drink of water at the sink faucet, I looked outside and there was this thing standing behind our Christmas tree. I know it was a thing and not a person because it was almost as tall as the tree and that's a good 6 to 7 feet tall or about a meter I think. I froze, I could see these two greenish yellow ones yes that reminded me of my dog whenever you'd shine a light on them. That thing made my skin crawl, I wanted to scream and shout and get this creature away from my house. The eyes blinked a couple of times but just stared me down, I couldn't make a good look at its face. But I tried to turn on the kitchen light and I couldn't even make out what I was seeing, until I walked to the sliding screen door that connects to the living room. That thing must have been staring at me or something because I walked over there to see if the light reflected something, and I got way more than I bargained for. I saw the lanky legs, a very skinny body, and the last thing I could make out was the snout. I haven't heard any Bigfoot around here with a long snout. I tried to get some pictures, but it was too dark to really pick up anything, even with light coming from the kitchen to reflect on it. My phone could make out a vague shape, but you could confuse that easily with the tree. I tried to use the flash but no good, I think that's how I scared it off or something. After a minute, maybe less of it staring me down in the living room, it turned around and hunkered down on all fours and ran towards an open field. I didn't dare to step outside. But in the bathroom where we have this tiny window cracked open, I could hear a bunch of cows and a few horses go nuts. I'm used to hearing coyote noises whenever the local horses neigh or the cows get in an uproar, but not this time. They were freaking out what seemed to be over nothing. I haven't heard cows or horses be that upset when it's this close to winter. I want to debunk this as a prank from one of my friends did, but the only friend I have over here lives a few streets down from me and he's have to wait at that tree until about 2 in the morning just to see if I got up to use the bathroom or get a drink. There was a video on this subreddit of a dog man looking through a screen window, and those eyes matched that of this creature. I joined last night out of the blue because I always found this thing interesting before I saw it myself. That thing is creepy, and I do not want that thing prowling around whenever I'm up late. So yeah, that's my encounter last night. Again this was in eastern Oregon and I have never heard of a dog man in this part of the state. Hopefully it was a one-time thing, 
If not, stay strapped or get clapped. I live in northern Indiana in the country and me and my brother and his friend went camping up there into some deep woods near a lake, I couldn't sleep, but they were sleeping, so I was up tending to the fire, walking around the campsite, and I heard something, like a howl, and coyotes are very common around here, I have a lot of experience with them like how they act and sound and everything because of how abundant they are, and I heard a howl that was definitely not a coyote or a dog, it was really deep. The only thing it could have been is a wolf, but we don't have wolves up here, I have a sneaky suspicion that I may have been close. To the dog man. Skunk ape sighting my dad told me about. This story takes place in the late 90s slash early 2000s. My dad was in the Navy, and at the time of this story he was on leave, visiting home. This incident took place in rural Pennsylvania, in the Allegheny National Forest. I don't know if this has any significance, but our town has a huge native history with a reservation just north of us. My dad was seeing an old friend from high school, and they were driving along one of the very empty roads surrounded by woods in our area. The road was dug into a giant and very steep hill, covered in huge towering evergreen trees. As they were driving, Suddenly a small black figure launches 40 feet from the upslant of the hillside and lands on the pavement right in front of the car. They hadn't stopped yet, and they're just about to hit the figure's dead corpse. Until right when they're about to hit it, and it springs up and jumps over the guard rail, and down the hillside. Apparently, they both saw it, but didn't know. So they both sat in silence, not wanting to look crazy. Until my dad's friend says dude. Was that a monkey? My dad says I don't know. I thought I was just seeing stuff. My dad said that all he saw was that it looked like a chimp, except its fur was much longer and rattier. It hung down from its arms, and it was matted and wet. He didn't get a glimpse of anything else. A few years later, when the internet came along, he found out about the skunk ape. He maintains to this day that he thinks it was a skunk ape. Any ideas? I am an enthusiast about werewolf, it all started when I saw one in front of me, he followed me on a trail, but I narrowly escaped, and it wasn't in Achibaya, it was in another city. In Achibaya, state of Sao Paulo, there are one or more packs of werewolves, causing terror in the population. There are cases and reports on YouTube, even one that somehow mentions an ex-communist president he found a few years ago turning into a beast. I found it interesting to bring this information, in Achibaya the situation is no good. There is a neighborhood in particular that nobody goes out on the street at night, the neighborhood with the name Tank, or Neighborhood of the Tank. If you want links to videos in Portuguese I can share them here. There are a few notabale sightings in NY state within 30 to 40 minutes of the NJ border. What most people don't know is the northern tip of NJ has tons of mountain wilderness too. I hunt Sussex County NJ all the time and although I have never seen anything but one time scouting in the early fall I had a weird experience. I run into bear 75% of the time I go into the woods and know how to handle myself, and they don't scare me. But I was scouting four years ago, prior to my knowledge of Dogman, my buddy and I found this square boulder. The top was perfectly flat. I've never seen a natural rock shape like that before, almost like an altar. Just over the next ridge I found this raised plateau unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's very hilly up there but this section of woods was dead flat and in the middle of it was a giant knoll about 20 feet tall 10 feet wide and maybe 10 feet long. I climbed up top to check out what the shooting lanes could look like. While up there I got this crazy feeling of paranoia. I'd counter describe it but I felt like I was being stalked. At the time not knowing about dogmen I started thinking there must be a bear in the area but I could not shake the paranoia I felt. 
It continued to get worse and worse to the point I started sweating bullets. I felt like a bear was going to pop out and attack me at any moment. This makes no sense as I am not afraid of bears and have had literally hundreds of bear encounters in the woods. I didn't shake that feeling until we hiked almost a mile away. Turns out that whole valley we were in was a main vein that used to be patrolled by a prominent Indian tribe. Something tells me what we found was a ceremonial area. No hard evidence to support that but just a gut feeling. Such a unique mound in the middle of nowhere. No chance it was man-made at least in modern Timea. I still think about that feeling to this day. Never saw or heard anything but I have never had that type of paranoia of feeling like a prey any time in NY life. Have not gone back to that spot since. And that mound we found would have made an amazing natural hunting blind. I'm in quasi-rural S Jersey too. My friend on the next block growing up swears he and another friend saw some cryptid in the corner of his yard just in off the woods with abnormally long skinny arms. It was watching them play intently. They both took off into the house. Fun side note, the house was also apparently very haunted so it was a damned if you do damned if you don't type deal. Possible dog man or other cryptid sighting. Okay so I know technically Therese no cryptids in Michigan. Like what I saw besides the dog man which supposedly isn't near me. But the other night around 3 am I was walking down the road and I saw this herd of deer running across the road. And then right behind them this thing came out of the woods and it was big like deer size. But its head wasn't on its neck it was on its shoulders and it was way too big to be a coyote or a dog. It ran under a light and I could see it was colored dark black. Like its skin was black and I say skin because this creature looked almost leathery. Not anything like it was furry. It also cleared the main road in about two steps just boom boom gone. We have no beers, no moose, no wolves, no buffalo, nothing that looks like this. And I know 100% this was not a deer. Any ideas? My good friend had an encounter a number of years ago. Him and his buddy were driving near Carlsbad, New Mexico when they saw a dog eating roadkill on the side of the road. They stopped maybe 20 to 30 feet after they passed it so my friend could get out and get a better look. When he started walking closer the dog got up on two legs and started walking towards him so he got back in the car and his friend saw it too and was yelling go mother effer, go. They took off and didn't see it again. He said it was standing near a sign and its head reached to the top of it. He went back the next day and measured where it reached on the sign and said it was 9 feet tall. He said it looked really similar to the werewolf from the movie The Howling. I known him for over 10 years and he's never lied to me or been one to make things up. Before he told me about his encounter I didn't believe something like that existed. My recent encounter. Today I had a very creepy experience on my way to work in the morning. I normally don't believe in supernatural stuff, but I'll be damned if that was just a normal animal. On my way to work I often use a small road through a densely wooded area. It is a pretty long and pretty straight road. I left home at around 4.30 am and was driving, minding my business and slowly waking up completely, when I suddenly noticed, what I thought was a very large dark grey or black dog sitting next to the road. As it was still dark, I couldn't make it out in full detail, so I slowed down, in case it started to run across the road but when I got closer and the headlights captured it in full. It just stood up and calmly retreated into the bushes next to the road. But as soon as it stood up, it was very clear that this was no normal dog. It was huge. Bear size at least or even bigger, I'd say. Shorter hind legs, very muscular front, a weirdly long snout and pointy ears, and a bushy tail. 
It walked almost like some sort of hyena, but always on all fours. Big predators are very rare in this area and if there is a sighting about every two years or so, it is only some lone wolves or very very rarely a bear wandering through. This stretch of road has always given me the creeps, but now the fear has a face. One thing I had noticed the last days was that there were no other animals around. Normally there are always some deer, some foxes or, if I get lucky, even a badger around. But this week? None. Not even a bird. There had also been some reports of missing livestock in this area. Two sheep went missing the last week and yesterday a horse was lost. It was later found, brutally ripped apart and partially consumed. I don't know if the unknown canine creature is responsible for this, but I highly suspect it. It happened in the summer of 2015. My then girlfriend and me had been enjoying the summer, had a few days off of work and on our last night of our vacation, we wanted to go and enjoy a romantic night at a location about 20 miles away from our hometown. It is a pretty valley with a very clear and cold river, various small islands are located in the stream with a bit of brush and some small trees on them. The river is shallow enough to wade through it. It isn't well known amongst tourists, so it is great for some NSFW activities. We love to go skinny dipping there. Well, that's what we had planned. Sadly, it went a bit different than we wanted. The first half of the night went pretty good actually. We found a nice spot, set up a small camp, laid some blankets out, put up some candles and went skinny dipping and stuff. We got tired, decided to call it a night and wrapped us up in the blankets. That's when it started. All the while we were there, there were always some animals around and we heard them. Deer calls, a fox, owls. Just the typical noises of the night. Until they stopped. Nothing. Just the murmur of the river running over the rocks. That's when we heard it for the first time. It was a howl. But no wolf. It was deep, growling, earth shakening and it felt like it rattled every bone in my body. It was just terrifying. My girlfriend was as shaken as I was. I have been outdoors all my childhood. I grew up on my parents' farm and in the woods around it, so I know every animal roaming around in them. I know the deer calls, I know what the fox says and I know the howl of wolves and I know the roar of bears. But this? No. I never heard anything like it. And I never want to hear something like it again. We suddenly decided that my bed at home is a better location to sleep than this river bed. We got up, packed our stuff and started to head out. That's when we heard it the second time. The same howl, deep, rumbling, shaking, followed by a deep growl. Whatever it was that made this noise, it was big. And we didn't want to meet it. Unfortunately it was still about two miles to my car. We had to cross the river two times to get to the river bank where the trail through the woods to my car started. When we crossed it, we thought we saw and heard something crossing the river with us. I had a small flashlight with me and when we arrived on the river bank I shone it back. What we saw, made our knees get weak. A huge animal was standing on the opposite river bank. Dark fur, pointy ears, very muscular body shape, and a head almost like a German shepherd, but the most fear-inducing was its eyes. Orange slash yellow glowing eyes, seemingly fixed on us. We booked it. We ran all the way back to my car. We could hear it charging through the river, but it must have stopped at the bank, as we didn't hear it anymore after we entered the woods. We made it back to our car safely and we decided to never go there again. At least not at night, but in fact I haven't gone there again since then. Dog Man in Scotland? My uncle used to live in quite a remote part of Scotland. He's not the sort of person to make up stories or scare easily. I don't have a lot of detail about it at all and I can't ask him so this is the best I can do. He was driving along a deserted country road after dark in autumn slash winter. 
While he was driving he suddenly saw a huge black dog looking thing that didn't look natural at all by the side of the road. We don't have wolves in this country and it wasn't a normal dog. This thing was big. Could it possibly be something like a dog man? Werewolf encounter in Pullman, Washington. I didn't know this forum existed until recently, but after spending some time here reading similar stories, I've decided to share my humanoid encounter to add it to the record of people who have had these kinds of experiences. As I have not spent much time researching this sort of thing, I do not know how to classify the being I encountered, and I would appreciate any suggestions as to its identity. I will tell the story in as much detail as possible for our collective record, but I will warn you ahead of time, it is relatively mundane and basically begins and ends with me seeing the shadowy figure of a wolfman-like entity and going out of my way to avoid it. The encounter occurred on February 2, 2016 at around 5 to 8 p.m. in Pullman, Washington. I was living in Pullman working and completing graduate degrees at Washington State University. I know the exact date because I have a habit slash hobby of writing bad poetry, and so when some phrase pops into my head that I want to write down, I jot it in the notes on my phone. That day, I wrote, and this is true, I'm afraid to walk alone afraid I'll meet the devil on the road. Until writing this, I had honestly forgotten about this strange detail of the story which in retrospect is probably the least explainable aspect as it implies the encounter was somehow more than coincidental. Pullman is a small college town that is extremely walkable. For anyone who may be reading this familiar with the area, I commuted on foot daily from Lamont Street on Military Hill, down the walking slash biking path, and up College Hill via Stadium Way, mostly, to campus. So, I would walk down a hill, through a valley on a bike path, and up a well-lit hill into a college campus, taking about 45 minutes. Some other relevant details about Pullman are that it's extremely isolated, surrounded by rolling wheat fields to an extreme degree of deforestation, basic solely populated by local townies and undergraduates, the sun goes down famously early in any season but summer, drunk undergraduates are common but very uncommon far from College Hill, where the encounter took place, it's not enough of a town to have a homeless population, and drifters are few and far between. To the point, I walked home that evening in the dark as I had hundreds of times. Upon reaching nearly the base of the street that I lived on, where the bike path would lead up to the nearby road, Grand Avenue, I saw the form of a humanoid crouched in the path ahead. While the road is somewhat lit, the bike path is down a small berm from the road and is very poorly lit in this spot. From about 60 feet out, I began to feel afraid, as I could not make out much about the form. About 30 to 40 feet from the crouched form, I stopped. I think if the figure was wearing clothing or had human skin of any shade, it would have caught more light. Instead, it looked too large to be human, its back too curved, its head too far forward and though I saw no evidence of fur, the context suggested to me very heavily that it was fur-covered. My inner dialogue ran through the options, and nothing made sense. If it was human, it was a very tall man crouched over as if balling himself up on the road, back deeply arched over. If it was not, it was humanoid and something people do not generally believe exists. Those are really the only two options. I began to have a fight or flight response. I said hey. At a moderate volume something like two or three times. The form moved. It looked like it was turning its head toward or away from me. I never saw eyes or any kind of light catch it. It just looked like a hunched over, crouched humanoid in the middle of a bike path at night, too large to be a person whose high school didn't try to get him to play basketball. And hey. Maybe it was a drunk basketball player half a mile from campus. Or maybe not. I was torn between the realization that I was potentially witnessing something fantastic and the will to live beyond the moment. The will to live, fear, I guess, one. I immediately clambered up the embankment to the road, crossed the road, and walked the rest of the way home on the other side. The height difference, darkness, 
and existence of the berm kept me from seeing the form any further. I walked up the hill to my apartment, locked the door, and reflected on the bad poem line I had jotted earlier. I wondered if I was being followed by some evil creature and would be further hunted. Nothing else happened, and it became a funny story I told my friends in town. I don't know if this story and its details might be useful to anyone, but I wanted to offer it up. It's a true story. It happened. I have no explanation for it. Even if it was a human, it's a strange coincidence with the note. Maybe the most likely scenario is a stressed out graduate student hallucinated. Dunno. Did I saw a dog man? So this story is from a few years ago but me and my mother remember every single detail of what happened but I would like some advice. I was almost 100% sure I saw a skinwalker but the location doesn't add up? So when I was about in 7th or 8th grade me and my mom were driving home from a therapy approach of mine, note, nothing for being schizoid, just depression and such. It was winter and a full moon because I remember the snow glowing under the moon. It was only 6 but really dark out because, you know, it's in the middle of winter. So we are going about 55 miles per hour when this thing crosses and stops in front of us. The only way I can describe it is that it was if you combined a deer, a dog, and a human. It stood about as tall as our windshield, it had the legs of what I can describe as a deer, its back was hunched over and walking on all fours. It had the head of a dog but its eyes were white and it didn't have a tail. The freakish thing about this creature was its skin. It wasn't a canine with mange or anything it had actual human skin all the way down its legs, to long to be dog legs. It smelt of rotting meat and some parts the flesh was broken open like if you would scrape your knee. It was pale white and you could see its veins. And this thing was fast like it stood there and just ran across the road in the blink of an eye. Me and my mom had to pull over to calm down. We both saw it. This sighting was in southeastern Ohio, between Gallipolis and Athens. I haven't seen the creature since but it still haunts me to this day and on that highway I'm scared to see it again. Can anyone tell me what I saw? Thank you in advance. The Well-Behaved Werewolf My husband and I recently went and watched The Wolf of Snow Hollow and I was gushing to my in-laws how fun the movie was. While on the topic of werewolves, I shared this story this past weekend with them and it creeped them out. Years ago I was working at a veterinary clinic and I was kennel staff. We provided dog boarding and I frequently worked the weekends tending to the dogs, making sure they were walked, fed and cleaned up after. It was a pretty fun job. One weekend we had two big huskies staying with us. In retrospect, one of them was particularly tall and fluffy so it might have been a Malamute or Mutt or whatever. Regardless, they were great dogs and they didn't poop or pee in their kennel, they played outside great and were super friendly with me. In a word, well behaved. Monday rolled around and their owners were there to pick them up. For safety, when it came to big dogs, we were only to bring up one at a time from the kennels to the front lobby. I followed that protocol, grabbing the smaller one first. Before I proceed, I have to explain the kennel setup so this next part makes sense. Where we kept larger dogs was against the far wall of the kennel room. These were large indoor runs about 15x15 and both huskies stayed together in one such run over that weekend. The walls were made of stainless steel, for easy disinfecting, and about 15 in height. The front wall of the kennel was this special kind of reinforced glass so you could see the entirety of the kennel from outside of it. Also of interest, we only had one other guy staffed at the vet clinic and he was about 5-10 inches in height. So I brought out the first dog and there was lots of happy yelping and husky talk, those of you who own huskies know what I mean, when the dog was reunited with family. I brought up the second dog and he or she was very reserved, tail wagging and just generally happy. The owners didn't say a lot to me, 
other than thanks and have a good day and they didn't stay long once they had their dogs back. We generally had owners pay first before we brought dogs up from the kennels because it made it easier for the owners to not have to juggle their wallets and an excited dog. Task done, I went back to the kennels to clean up and get it ready for the next round of dogs to come in. I grabbed the spray bottle of disinfectant and made ready to clean the walls. And that's when I saw it. High up above me, about 14 up on the back wall, was a human handprint. And it wasn't a standard size, either. It was huge. Looking at it, I was thoroughly creeped out and got the handprint wiped off the stainless steel quickly using a multi-step stool, I'm 5 feet 5 inches. I told my co-workers, the vet techs, about it and they were creeped out too and told me to not bring it up again. I was the only one working kennels that morning. Between bringing up the last dog and returning to kennels, there was not enough time for our only male staff member to run in, jump up and leave a single handprint, I asked him later if he'd been in kennels at all and he said no, apparently around that time he was doing intake in a vet room. And like I said, the handprint was too big to belong to any normal sized human. And that's how I inadvertently took care of a well-behaved werewolf for a weekend. Tennessee? My friend and her family have experienced hearing stones clicking up at their home in the mountains. They live in a fairly secluded area about an hour from Gatlinburg. She described it happening at no specific time but when they'd hear it, the rocks clicking two or three times, every few minutes, it was too consistent to be something settling or moving around in the woods. It really freaked out her family. We were out in an open field, near our cabin, about a sprint or so away, stargazing and enjoying the chill in our bones. The entire time, I feel watched and begin hearing this clicking sound, and eventually grab my friend's attention to see if they could hear it. Sure enough, the sound was persisting, louder and closer now than before. But we couldn't see anything. It sounded as if it was right in front of us whatever was making that noise, but we couldn't see anything. Didn't smell anything, as I know that is also often attributed in a lot of sightings for a variety of things. All we could hear was the clicking of stones, and with no visible source for the sound, ourselves growing ever more scared, we decided it was time to head back inside. Had some trouble falling asleep, but once we settled down we were all out like broken lights. The rest of the trip was pretty fun, and then as we left, saying our farewells, we couldn't help but feel as if something or someone would miss being around us. At the least, I knew I'd most certainly miss that place, so breathtaking and serene, so I'm very excited to be going back here soon. Scariest night of my life. Very possible dog man encounter. Before I get started I just want to say this is a 100% true story that happened to me and a group of friends back in early July. This is not an attention grab of any sort. The events in which you will read may sound like the plot of a horror story but this is an actual night I lived through, no BS. I'm not an avid poster so sorry if the post is not up to reddit standards lol. I've been working up the courage to post my experience for some time. It is pretty lengthy but I believe it will be worth it for you. Please go easy on me in the comments like I said I don't post much at all. So my friends and I often go to my buddy's place just outside of Traverse City, Michigan a good 5 to 10 times throughout the course of a year and we usually stay for about 3 to 5 days at a time. There were 6 of us guys this time around all around 23 and 24 years old. This all happened the first night we got there. So we arrive at about 8 p.m. and as soon as we get there we throw back a couple beers and play some card games and listen to music and just BS. The night goes on and my friend that owns the place and another guy go to sleep at around midnight and the rest of us four decide to have a little bonfire. Bonfires are one of our favorite things to do up there because at night we can usually see every star in the sky, lots of shooting stars, 
and what we believe are UFOs and we just BS and tell stories. One of the guys we were with had only been there one other time and it was in the winter so he didn't get to experience any outdoor activities at night last time he was there so we made sure he got to see the sky and stuff. So the property is perched up on a steep hill with woods all around the very steep back and both of the sides. The woods directly behind the house aren't that thick and you can see the winding road that leads up to the hilly neighborhood. Just beyond the road is a main road and then Lake Michigan. All of which you can see from all areas of the back of the house. The main level has a walkout balcony deck with stairs that lead out to the bonfire pit directly to the right of the home. So anyway the four of us each grab a beer and go down there and the first thing we notice is that there is a full moon. It was hard to miss because through the trees it looked like a spotlight was shining on us around the bonfire. We were talking around the bonfire, look in at the sky and we kept bringing up the fact that the moon was so bright. One of my friends says to the guy who has only been up there one other time let's just call him the new guy, have you heard of the dog man? We always joke about the dog man around the bonfire up there. If you don't know about the Michigan Dogman it is an urban legend and Therese even a song that was made about it that used to play on the radio a long time ago in Northern Michigan, so after he said that I just had this eerie feeling. I kept feeling like I was being watched and hearing stuff behind me prior to that. I'm situated so that my back is to the woods with one friend directly across from me whose back is to the house and the other two are in the middle facing the steep hill with the thinner woods. Their backs are to the stairs leading up to the deck. Anyway they were all laughing about the dog man and I was just thinking like nah I don't want to joke about that tonight. So one friend says to the other you should play him the dog man song and I said out loud guys I don't think that's a good idea, let's not get him up in here, kinda jokingly but not really. They play the song and we are all laughing but I'm still hearing weird unusual noises behind. Not your average branches falling or chipmunks running around. It sounded like a bigger animal to me and I could tell that the new guy heard it too. It's about 2 AM at this point and they're all on the topic of scary stories and paranormal while I'm pretty quit and I'm usually the talker of the group. I keep hearing stuff and I'm starting to get nervous. The new guy is telling a personal scary story and I hear something big directly behind me. It sounded like something walking and so then I finally speak up and say guys I'm hearing things they kind of look at me and ignore me and they continue with the story. I hear it again but I didn't say anything I kind of just shine my phone flashlight down the hill to the right of me. I didn't see anything. A few minutes go by and it's still story time for them while I'm on edge trying to keep my cool. I hear the noise again and this time it was louder and I say guys shut up I hear something big they get quiet and listen but nothing. They continue their story. I'm scanning the area from the back right of me to in front of the right back and forth then all of a sudden I see something walking, something huge. I couldn't make out the shape of it exactly but the head looked almost like a deer but with a shorter snout and a wider and rounder head. It was walking straight, heading away from me parallel to me and the guy across from me but like 20 feet to the right on the steep decline. There are bushes right on top of the hill right in front of the bonfire and its head was clear over it. I stood in the same spot the next day and I could not see over the bushes and M5 apostrophe 10. Whatever it was it wasn't looking at me it was just facing the direction it was going. There could have been multiple but I couldn't tell. I glanced at it, freaked the hell out. Grabbed all of my stuff while yelling to my friends I just saw something, I just saw something. I'm going upstairs I don't care what you guys do but I'm going to bed. They were telling me to stay but I was already making my way to the steps. I calmly said one last time you guys can stay I don't care I'm going to sleep now I've had enough they say whatever and continue talking. As soon as I take my first step upstairs I hear the loudest most monstrous roar from behind me. By far the scariest noise I've ever heard ever. It sounded like a monster out of a movie. They heard it too and freaked out. I yelled. Come on come on. As I glanced behind me and saw them jump up and run towards me. We all ran up the stairs as fast as we could. 
ran across the deck and as soon as we passed the first kitchen window all of the lights in the house went out. I freaked out turned around towards them as I'm yelling. The power went out, the power went out. What do we do I heard one say. Just go, just go. As soon as we pass the second window the power goes back on. We get in the house run down to the lower level and try to wake up the friend who owns the place. We are all yelling at him that something is outside and that he needs to get up. He would not budge and just said go to bed. We didn't want to wake up the other guy because we didn't know him that well at the time and didn't want him to think we were weirdos. Us four gather in one of the rooms and are shook up as all hell. We ask each other what the hell was that. As him yelling I told you about me seeing something. I go on to tell them exactly what I saw and that I wasn't around. We try to figure out what the hell we should do next and consider leaving and getting a hotel or just driving four hours south back home. We all had the feeling as if something was trying to kill us. We've all never been so scared and we all love the outdoors. Do a big hiking and camping trip in the upper peninsula once a year but we've never heard anything like that. We are still all talking 100 miles per hour when we hear the Amazon Echo aka Alexa a whole two levels above us at full volume. Which we didn't even have it on earlier. Say sorry, Alexa cannot connect to Wi-Fi right now please try again later. So we all get even more frantic and realize none of our phones have service. We calm down and after about 5 minutes of silence and listening for noises we discuss the fact that if we are going to leave then we will have to go upstairs anyway and grab the keys. We man up and slowly walk up there. Everything is dead silent. No wine no outdoor noises no nothing, and majority of the windows are open in the house. There are a lot of windows on the main level all really big with no blinds or curtains so if something was outside it could most likely see us but we couldn't see it because of the reflection. We decide to shut off all lights so we could see outside and lock all the doors and windows. We go over to the spare bedroom on the left side of the house and all peek out the big window to see if we can see anything below us on the steep hill. We didn't see anything but we noticed something very strange and unusual for this time of night in a neighborhood of mostly older folks. There was car on the winding road behind the house down below facing our direction with its hazard lights on. We all stare at it for 5 to 10 minutes and are wondering what it's doing, did it see what I saw, did it hear what we heard, did it hit something. This is kind of a private road and neighborhood so it was just all very unusual especially it being after 3 am during quarantine, 20 minutes away from town. It eventually turns its hazard lights off and does a U-turn which is also very unusual then flicks its headlights on and goes off on the main road. We all agree that that was weird as hell then continue our night looking out the windows but we didn't see anything. None of us went to sleep that night and we continued to hear little noises as we were trying to get some shut eye but those were probably out of paranoia. When our other friends woke up we told them what we went through but they just laughed and didn't really seem to believe it. We were there three more nights after that, but they were completely normal. I've even been back there on two separate occasions since then and both times have been nothing out of the ordinary. All I can say is that I've never in my life experienced fear like that. It felt like I was living in a classic horror movie and I actually thought I was going to die. P.S. The following day we googled and YouTubed all of the large animal noises we could think of like moose, a buck, a black bear, ect. But we couldn't compare it. One of the guys compared it to a car with a V8 engine stepping all the way down on the gas pedal right next to his ear that's how loud it seemed. The new guy didn't remember hearing the noise a couple days later but remembered everything else. Then me and the other friend just thought it sounded like a straight up monster. For the rest of the trip we all came to the conclusion that it was a probably a bear. On our way back home we did more research and realized the only bear in Michigan are black bears and they only stand about 5 feet on their hind legs. Plus the figure in which I saw looked more like a gray color. Anyway, thank you for reading and sorry for the length. Please share opinions. What do you think it could have been? Sasquatch, extraterrestrial, dog man, some everyday woodland animal? 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.